So if you're a fan of the channel, you would know that we like to dive into the story of Call of Duty, and in doing so, we've dove into many characters, many groups of characters, like Task Force 141, the ending of games, things like that. But I got an email the other day from a subscriber telling me that I should dive into the backstory of Al Catala, and when I read that, I was kind of shocked that we haven't already made this video, because if you've played the Modern Warfare games, you know that Al Catala is incredibly influential over the entire story of all of the new Modern Warfare games. And if you don't understand their story, you won't fully understand the overarching story of Modern Warfare. So that's exactly what we're gonna do today. We're gonna dive into all of the antagonists that have been in Alcatala over the time of the story, break it down from where they started to where they are now. But before we do that, I first have to tell you about today's video sponsor. And the way we're gonna do that is by going over to the other office. If you're a fan of the channel, then you probably like video games. And what's better than a video game? a free one. And that is why today's video is sponsored by Crossout. Crossout is an online vehicle shooter that is absolutely free to play on PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S with no purchase necessary whatsoever. All you have to do is simply download and play. Now, cool thing about this game is all vehicles are player made. There's complete creative freedom. Everything is made from individual parts with mostly endless possible combinations. There are a huge arsenal of parts to choose from, from structural elements to wheels, cabins, and an immense array of weapons. They can include chainsaws, power drills, crossbows, gatling guns, basically anything you can imagine. Crossout is extremely easy to get into. You can craft a vehicle from scratch in no time with the intuitive in-game editor, seamlessly jump into a quick test drive, or head right into battle. You can play a variety of distinct game modes, including PvP games, PvE raids, which can be played co-op cooperatively, and on top of that they have special seasonal modes including battle royale, racing, vehicle football, clan wars, and much much more. And on top of that there's an adventure mode which is narrative driven which you guys know I love. My personal favorite part of this is definitely crafting the vehicles, but on top of that there's also a marketplace where you can take your parts, sell them, buy other ones, and just make better and better vehicles. So as I mentioned if you like free games be sure to check out Crossout it is the first link down in the description and if you use my link down below you're gonna get an exclusive bonus which includes includes the unique pixel paint as well as your choice between a selection of three weapons and a powerful vehicle cabin as well. So check it out and thank you Crossout for sponsoring the video. So to understand Alcatala, you first have to understand Yurzikstan. This is the location where Hadir and Farah Karim are from in the original Modern Warfare 2019. Now we see in the early days that Yurzikstan is being attacked by Roman Barkov's forces. And through this, something is created by the name of the Yurzikstan militia, a group of soldiers come coming together to fight against the Russians and specifically Roman Barkov's forces. Now, the reason why the Russians were invading was to take over the land of Yurzikstan. So the militia was rose from the ashes, but from this, there was also a separate group of people, extremists, if you will. And they were led by someone named Omar Suleiman and his right-hand man, the Butcher. Our war is not for our fate. We fight to remove all foreign power from our soil. So where the basis of this seems to make a lot of sense, it's the extremes that they go to which cause issues. In the very first mission of Modern Warfare 2019, you play as Alex, breaking into a Russian compound, storing chlorine gas. However, when you do so, at the end of the mission, you are ambushed. Now, at the time, you don't know this. However, the person carrying out this ambush is someone who is in the Yurzikstan militia, but also working for Alcatala. It is Hadir Karim, AKA Farah's brother. And then just one day later, Alcatala ends up pulling off a terrorist attack on Piccadilly Circus. We are Alcatala. We are the killers. We fight without sorrow. We wage war without sympathy. This is the only way to live and die. Soldier. 
So after this, we have Captain Price and Gaz go in and through the mission clean house, end up finding out where is Omar Solomon. From here, Alex is sent in alongside some of the Yurzikstan militia to go track down and capture Omar Solomon, which is exactly what they do. So from here, they take Omar Solomon, AKA the wolf to the US embassy, at which time Al Katala ends up attacking it. And by the end of the mission, Omar Solomon ends up escaping. After this, you go to the highway of death alongside Farah and Hadir. And essentially what's going on here is Omar Solomon is trying to escape the city. And at the same time, Roman Barkov's forces are trying to hunt them down. At this point, you are attacked by Barkov's forces while you are trying to take out Omar Solomon. And this is where Hadir proves that he's not afraid to go to extreme circumstances to fight Roman Barkov's forces. Russian gas? Yes! And now we send it back to the Russians! So from here, Hadir manages to escape, and he is using these extreme circumstances that Al Qatali uses to get back at the Russians and specifically Roman Barkov for what they did to his father and what they did to Yurzikstan. However, your next step is actually to hunt down the wolf, which you go through some foxholes alongside Farah, and this is what ends up happening. Timer, he has a vest. There is no escape. This is the end. Your brother needed help. He has big plans. Killing me cannot stop him. Even I cannot stop him now. It is too late, Commander. He has a remote. Still counting. So basically what the wolf is saying there is he is no longer the commander of Al-Qatala, but rather Hadir is. So where we may have taken out the wolf and Omar Suleiman, Hadir is still at large. Now this next part of the story is relatively boring, so we're just gonna fast forward a bit. Essentially, you end up capturing Hadir and essentially in doing so, end up eliminating Al-Qatala, or so we thought until the post credit scene of the game. You see, at the end of the game, you end up eliminating Roman Barkov and essentially in doing so, create a massive power vacuum for one, Russian forces to take over and two, where does al Qatala and the rest of their forces stand after this? Well, we find out over a cup of tea. Tea? Yeah, well, I'm a long way from a proper pint. Russia disowned Barkov. Well, they didn't have much choice, did they? He's dead. You took a big bite out of that problem, John. For now. But left unchecked. It won't be. General Shepard pulled the files you asked for. What exactly is this about? A task force. Mm -mm. We already have loose ends. Then I will tie them. I can fund assets, not outlaws. Enjoy the tea, then. Sakaev wants Barkov's throne. I almost buried him in Pripyat with Macmillan. That was the father. This is the son, Victor. Lovely family. They're big fans of Hadir's. Well, that would explain why he's still alive. They're gonna get him out. Now, it was never really confirmed that they 100% did, but what ends up happening next is very concerning, because we are then introduced to the new leader of al Qatala by the name of Khalid al-Assad, and we then find out that he is working with Viktor Zakayev, a Russian, and on top of that, an arms dealer, and together, they are basically putting together a terrorist organization, a combination between Russian forces and al Qatala. and from this, we actually get a new name. Our presence in the region is the only line of defense preventing Z and the new AQ boss from pushing through to Urzikstan. This unknown leader is now calling his army al Qatala al Jadid. So originally, al Qatala stood for the killers. al Qatala al Jadid stands for the new killers. And this is the one that is being ran by Khalid al-Assad, who, by the way, I still think is Hadir. And on top of that, he is working alongside Russians and specifically Viktor Zakayev. Now, again, we can go through this part of the story relatively quickly. By the end of the Warzone story during the Modern Warfare era, we find out that Khalid al-Assad ends up escaping Verdansk. This is followed up by Viktor Zakayev going to extreme circumstances and trying to launch nukes. This is when Task Force 141 comes in, specifically Captain Price, and stops Viktor Zakayev. Well, I won't kill you, but the fool will wait. <laughs> Stations. Zakayev is dead, but the missile is hot. Nick, I need the codes now. Copy. Here's the codes, 
So with Khalid al-Assad escaping for dance, Al-Qatala is definitely not dead. However, Captain Price did put a big dent because he stopped their weapons supplier with Victor Zakaev. And this is where we lead into with Modern Warfare 2. From here, we find out that there is a new leader of Al-Qatala. By the way, throughout the game, there is no mention of Khalid al-Assad. This character goes by the name of General Hassan. And as far as he goes, he is currently leading Al-Qatala. You're the commander of a foreign terror organization. I can say the same to you. What's your target, Major? What was your target when you sent missiles to my land? A well, wild guess to nail your ass. So insolent and foul mouth. You will learn to respect me when your nation sees fire. You are in bed with the cartel, Hassan. If you disappeared, no one would know where to look for the fucking stain. So essentially, Al-Qatala being desperate to get weapons, they went to a Mexican drug cartel by the name of Las Almas. So that solved their weapons problem. But we also find out that they are working with the Russians because the entire story of Modern Warfare 2 revolves around General Shepard sending Shadow Company in with ballistic missiles and the Russians and Al-Qatala end up stopping them, stealing the ballistic missiles, and they essentially try launching them at the US. Now, long story short, by the end of the game, you end up taking out General Hassan and therefore one of, if not the leader of Al-Qatala. But the question is, is where does this leave Al-Qatala moving forward? forward because we know not all of their soldiers are dead and they're still working with various people. So I want to point out right away that there is no word from Khalid al-Assad, and we know that Al-Qatala was getting their weapons from Los Almos, or the Mexican drug cartel. Now at this point, we don't know if that is still where they are getting their weapons, but I actually highly doubt it based off of the end of the game. In fact, when we find out this bit of information at the very end... Who is he? Makarov. We can then essentially extrapolate that Al-Qatala is in bed with Vladimir Makarov, and in other words, with my guess, Khalid al-Assad is specifically working with Vladimir Makarov. And I'm guessing with the raids coming out and everything like that, that is where we are going to see the story moving forward, especially with Farah being one of the main characters in the raid. Hadir makes a return as Khalid al-Assad. He's working with Makarov. And I'm guessing that is where the story is going moving forward. And that is where the story of Al-Qatala will go as well. But that is all the story we have for Al-Qatala as of now. As we get more information and more story, of course, I will keep the videos coming. But but if you wanted to be filled in on Alcatala, there is the full story. If you enjoyed, be sure to hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn notifications on. Let me know what you think down in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, peace out. We are, we are